Hi, this is part 2 of expected questions from all level camera science playlist. I have added all the questions in the description below. If you want to experiment with the questions before watching the video, you can go ahead. So our seventh question is comment on the efficiency of your code for task 1. Usually the efficiency questions are not too long. They are of 2 or 3 marks. So the answer is not supposed to be long. Think of all the strong points of your code here. Like you are using the for loop to index arrays to display information about the items. You are not hard coding the indexes. Instead you are using a counter variable in for loop and you are validating your input then showing proper prompts if the input is not valid and you are taking numbers as input instead of item name or item code so the chances of wrong input are reduced for example if you ask the user to enter the item code he have to press two characters a1 so the chances of wrong input has increased if you only ask for numbers like 0 1 2 3 chances of wrong input have been decreased and you are not storing the prices of chosen item, the description of chosen item or the name of chosen item in separate array or separate variables. You are utilizing the same arrays you have initialized already for all this, all of these purposes. Like you are calculating the prices from these arrays, you are displaying the chosen items from these arrays. So this way you are uh, using as less variables as you can. That's a good approach. And this is my answer that we have used a for loop to display prices directly from the arrays. Instead of hard coded indexing, we have not stored price of chosen items again and we use the same arrays already initialized or program prompts the user to enter numbers to choose an item instead of the item code. So chances of wrong input have been, have been reduced this way. The program shows proper prompts if wrong input is given. Our next question is explain how task 1 has been extended to meet the requirements for task 2. Any programming statements used in your answer must be fully explained. So there can be a question about how you have done a certain task using pseudocode, flowchart or programming code. Or they can ask you to explain how you have implemented the task. In the explanation question, you can use the programming statements to emphasize your point. And sometimes they ask you to explain in detail using your code and then explain each line of your code properly that how you have implemented the task. So these are uh, somehow similar questions. I'll imagine my pseudocode uh, or I'll write it down in my answer and leave proper spaces to explain the lines. For example, here I am going to explain why I have initialized the item category location to 8 and the reason is the additional item in the arrays starts from 8, 8 index. So to display additional items I have set it to 8. Next I have used a for loop to display all the items, all the additional items available. That's pretty simple. You can write few lines here that you have uh, ask the user to choose from all the additional items using numbers given in the for loop you can add, and also you have given the user the choice of minus one to finish the shopping because if user does not want to buy any additional item he can skip uh, the step and if he wants to buy one or two or three it's up to him so he can press minus one to finish the shopping so you will write all of this in between your code I have added my explanations here. Uh, the code for task 1 is extended before calculating prices. We have to mention where the uh, code is added from task 1. We have set our initial location to index array to 8 because additional items start from 8 index. And then for loop is used to output items. And then we have also mentioned minus 1 to finish the shopping. After displaying all items available, the program takes input from the user. So important things are to mention the flow of the program. For example, how are you taking input? How are you validating the input? How are you processing the input? And then what are you displaying to the user? What is your output? So following the same process here, the program takes input from the user. We don't know how many items user would buy. So we have used a while loop instead of for loop. This loop will always run until the user presses minus 1. The input from the user is checked. It should be minus 1 or in range 0 to 8. If not, the while loop. A while loop is run. So I have mentioned a while loop because it's another while loop. 
until the input is correct program also shows all items and numbers to select them again in case of wrong input so and there is a new thing break statement here so i have mentioned a line about it if input is minus one break statement is used to get out the loop otherwise the index of the chosen item in items prices array is stored in chosen item list chosen item list already contains chosen items from task one then the loop to display all items and calculate all total prices is the same as task one because it was utilizing the indices stored in the chosen item list to access items and chosen item list is same it has all the indices so that's all uh, if you are asked about how you have done the task one you will again uh, you will write all the code and explain everything it will be similar but in that question you will also mention how you are calculating the price our next question is explain how you calculated and updated the total price of the computer part of task 2 you can include pseudocode or programming statements as part of your explanation all the indices of items selected by the customer in task 1 and 2 are stored in chosen item list later the same code as in task 1 is used to calculate the prices Final price has been initialized to 200. A for loop is used to extract indices of chosen items from chosen item list. These indices are used to output item code, item category, item description and prices. Final prices are also updated by totaling the price in loop. So this one is pretty simple I guess. Next question is pretty simple. Explain how you store the details of additional chosen items with their prices part of task 2. You can include the recorded programming statements as part of your explanations. Explanations. So um, we did not store the prices and details of additional item in any new variable. So we'll just say that the index of chosen item in item prices array is stored in chosen item list. Chosen item list already contains chosen items from task 1. So the loop to display all the items and calculate order prices is the same as task 1 because it was utilizing the indices stored in the chosen item list to access items. We did 6 questions in part 1 and part 2 has 4 questions. I have few more questions to go. I'll share the PDF of all the questions in my last video. It is not fully prepared yet. Subscribe to my channel if you are interested in more computer science and programming related content.